Hi and welcome to NTD China News. I'm Karen Chang. Making headlines this Thursday, December 13th. Sichuan's deputy party chief is sacked. Halfway across the world, New Yorkers are told about organ harvesting in China. And old wounds and new tensions. China marks the anniversary of the Nanjing Massacre. A senior official from Sichuan province has officially been dismissed for corruption. Li Chuncheng was taken away for questioning on December 2nd, and while most see his ousting as part of the Chinese regime's new fight against corruption, is there something more to his downfall? Sichuan province second in charge, Li Chuncheng, has been sacked. State-run media reported today that the deputy party chief was dismissed, suspected of, quote, serious discipline violations. Li is the highest level official to be toppled under new leader Xi Jinping's campaign against corruption. But Li's political ties suggest there may be more to his fall from power. During his political career in Sichuan province, Li worked under China's former security chief Zhou Yunkang. Where can you find one official that's not corrupt in China? This case is targeting Zhou Yunkang and his allies, including Bo Xilai. Xi Jinping is trying to establish his rule and win popular opinion. Zhou Yunkang is a close ally of former communist leader Jiang Zemin. Until November, Zhou was the head of China's security apparatus, the Political and Legislative Affairs Committee. His former membership in the top ruling circle, the Politburo Standing Committee, gave the PLAC nearly unchecked powers in suppressing dissent. The PLAC's political rank was downgraded during November's power transfer, and some believe Li Chunqing's ousting is a preemptive move against his higher-up allies. It is certainly like this in politics. They go from the bottom to reach the top, to bring down the leader. They need to take away his subordinates. If you go for the head first, his supporters may still be there. If they retaliate, it could be costly. Li was taken away on December 2nd for questioning. The exact allegations against Li Chuncheng are unclear. Shen Yong, an official from Sichuan's provincial capital Chengdu, has claimed online Li engaged in bribery and favoritism during his reign as Chengdu's party chief. Shen also implicated Li's wife in mishandling donations for the 2008 Sichuan earthquake relief efforts. With Xi Jinping's side on battling corruption within the Communist Party, a grassroots campaign is suggesting something the regime can do to show us taking the problem seriously. This petition circulating online is calling on the top 205 leaders of the Chinese regime to reveal the assets they own. It's not a new idea and was even mentioned during November's party congress. In the latest effort to get communist officials to come clean about their wealth, the petition cited Xi Jinping's recent remarks saying, quote, corruption has increasingly worsened and it will lead to the fall of the party and the state. Dozens of people have signed onto the petition, amongst them lawyers, scholars and activists. Authorities in southern Guangdong province said this week that it would launch a trial to make some officials report their assets. Three district and county level regions are included, but already netizens have said officials there are too low down the hierarchy for the trial to have any significance. Mornings in New York have been getting chilly, but that hasn't stopped a group of people from raising awareness about human rights abuses happening in China. This morning, dozens of people stood on the streets of New York, handing out this publication by the Epoch Times newspaper, The Killing Rooms. It's part of an effort to support three U.S. doctors who are calling on President Obama to condemn forced organ harvesting in China. The doctors launched this petition on the website of the White House. They need at least 25,000 signatures by January 1st to get a formal response from the U.S. government. Allegations surfaced in 2006 that the Chinese government is killing prisoners of conscience for their organs. Independent investigators say practitioners of the Falun Gong meditation practice are the main group targeted. Others, including Uyghurs, Christians and Tibetans, are also believed to be victims of forced organ harvesting. For more on the petition, watch today's China Focus, where producer Shali Zhang speaks with one of the doctors who launched the petition. Organ harvesting is not a widely known issue, but if you ask any Chinese person about the Nanjing Massacre, they will certainly know. Today is the 75th anniversary since Japan occupied the former Chinese capital of Nanjing and killed hundreds of thousands of Chinese people, and events were held in China to mark the day. December 13th is the 75th anniversary of the Nanjing Massacre. It happened during the Second World War when Japan invaded China. 
Chinese estimate that around 300,000 civilians and soldiers were killed in Nanjing, China's capital at the time, during the six-week occupation. On Wednesday night, a candlelight vigil was held near the Nanjing Massacre Memorial in Nanjing. This Japanese woman at the vigil is the granddaughter of a soldier who was in China at the time of the massacre. I came to Nanjing to learn the history of the war and also to convey our condolences to the people killed by our ancestors. Many Chinese are upset that Japan has never formally apologized for the atrocities and has downplayed the incident in its textbooks. I think for Chinese people, we should have a national identity, and Japan should bravely recognize that stage of history. They shouldn't just be taking that history out of their textbooks. Still others are upset with their own government for publicly announcing its forgiveness of Japan shortly after the massacre took place. The massacre is also known as the Rape of Nanking, referring to over 20,000 women and men who were raped and then killed during the occupation. Current relations between China and Japan are a reflection of their troubled past. This year, anti-Japan sentiment and protests soared in China. A territorial dispute over the Diaoyu or Senkaku Islands saw protesters throwing glass bottles at the Japanese embassy in Beijing. And coming up after the break, Google closes shopping search engine in China. Jinan City builds China's largest government office. And a Chinese woman writes in two languages simultaneously. And welcome back. Search engine giant Google Inc. has further reduced its stake in the Chinese market. The company announced on Tuesday its e-commerce search engine is closing its China branch. Google says it's because the service didn't have the kind of impact it had hoped for. Google has seen steep competition from Chinese search engines and government censorship of its online sites. After it pulled out of China in 2010 over a censorship dispute, Google's search engine traffic in China shrunk. According to Analyst International, Google went from holding over a third of that traffic in 2009 to just 6% this September. This week's pullout follows an earlier product withdrawal in September. That's when Google closed its music downloading service in China, again over low traffic. Google says it will continue to offer online advertising for Chinese businesses, but will now charge companies for listing in its shopping search engine. With China's rise on the world stage, there has been increasing attention on how the Communist Party is ruling the country. During November's power transition, retiring Chinese leader Hu Jintao confirmed the regime will not undertake any political reform that may resemble Western-style democracy. This week, state-run People's Daily ran an opinion piece defending the party's way of doing things. China's state-run People's Daily thinks the world is prejudiced against the Communist Party. That's according to a commentary it published this week. The party mouthpiece says this prejudice will hurt China's rise on the world stage. The opinion piece, published on the paper's overseas edition, became hotly discussed. I, for one, have a very deep prejudice against it. Responding to the commentary, reposted on Kaijing.com, this netizen writes, If one person says you're not good, he may be wrong. But if 80% of the people say you're bad, it's time for reflection. One Chinese lawyer says it's actually the Chinese regime that is prejudiced against others. The world is quite objective and impartial to the Chinese Communist Party. The party stubbornly holds on to its own interests and wouldn't hesitate to reverse black and white for its own interests. The opinion article says despite prejudices against it, China's rise will be peaceful. It says the Communist Party will have a wide path to walk on if it, quote, loves China and mankind. Some question whether the party is capable of doing that. The socialist ideology of China doesn't allow dissent. If someone reserves an opinion or holds a critical view of its ideology, policy or anything, the Communist Party will think it's an attack or a gesture of hostility. While cautioning against Western prejudices toward the Communist Party, the People's Daily suggested that it will not be swayed by Western values. 
stressing the Chinese regime will continue down its path of, quote, socialism with Chinese characteristics. You might think that the biggest building in China is a major national prestige project or possibly an office tower with heavy corporate investment, but you'd be wrong. It's a newly built, massively expensive city office building in the second tier city of Jinan. Let's take a look. This massive building can put many fancy hotels to shame, and it's become the new focus of anger against corruption and wasteful public spending in China. The building, said to have cost around 640 million U.S. dollars, is a government office building. It sits in the city of Jinan in Shandong province. The local government doesn't care about the people's money. They spend the money at their will. I don't trust them at all. The building is hailed as the largest single building in Asia and the second in the world after the Pentagon. It takes up nearly 370,000 square meters, about 4 million square foot. That's nearly 70 football fields. Pictures of the opulent office for Jinan's bureaucrats spread quickly online. Astonishment and anger followed. Many government projects need funds, but the government doesn't give them money. Take Jinan City as an example. The traffic problems are very serious here, but traffic construction is very undeveloped. Also, many people don't have central heating. It's very cold in their houses in winter. Why doesn't the government invest in a project that people need? Even state-run Xinhua News Agency joined the chorus of criticism, though some of those messages appear to have been pulled. Jinan officials have defended their brand new office, claiming, quote, it didn't cost the government one cent. Apparently, the project was founded by the different government agencies, disposing their real estate in the city. The Jinan government building joins a series of luxury offices for communist officials around China. Like this one in Henan province, or this courthouse in Jiangsu, modeled after the U.S. Capitol building. Most of us write with either the right hand or the left hand. Some of us can manage to scribble something with both hands, but what about doing that at the same time? While a young woman in China can not only write with both hands, she can write in different languages. Let's take a look. A Chinese woman is gifted with a special ability. She can write with two hands in two different languages. Chen Suyuan, whose name means think further, discovered her gift by accident during high school while trying to cope with large amounts of English language homework. Her skill was the envy of many classmates who tried to do the same without success. On hearing about this, most people are disbelieved. After they see you do it, they also want to try. Normally, the ambidextrous 24-year-old from Handan in China's northern Hebei province is right-handed. But when it comes to repetitive tasks, Chen can switch on her special skill. She says her gift is being able to focus on two separate things at the same time, like writing Chinese with one hand and English with the other. English uses letters of the alphabet, while Chinese is a pictographic language with lots of complicated brush strokes. English letters are more fluid and smooth, so writing in both English and Chinese is a bit harder than writing in English and English. Chen, who dabbles in poetry, has put her skill to good use. She received a college degree in English this summer and is now working as a Chinese-English translator. And that's all for this broadcast of NTD China News. For more on China-related topics, visit our website at ntd.tv or subscribe to our new YouTube channel, NTD on China. Coming up next, we have China Focus, where Shelly Zhang speaks with one of the doctors behind a petition that's urging the White House to investigate claims of organ harvesting in China. Stay tuned.